Uh, we're here at Telenaro Connect, uh, Budapest, and uh, who are you? Hey, I'm uh, Sayed Mohammed Qasim. I work for Lenaro in Android TV project. So we have this new project called AOSP TV, which is it's a new here, sorry. Android AOSP TV. It sounds very interesting. Yeah, it's an AOSP TV lead project from Lenaro. So the goal here is to get all the AOSP components for uh, TV from uh, AOSP, like get all the Android TV components from AOSP and then we build uh, all the other differentiators into that like uh, our integrating our security uh, opti security framework and then we integrate all the open applications which are available in the uh, open source like exo player and uh, like android sample inputs live tv apps and these things and then we provide one end to end uh, solution for our members which is called mlcr from linaro home group which is meant for smart tvs and setup box uh, to just enable the premium services around the android tv segment so here we are showing a demonstration so with, uh, which is like running Android TV on Hikey. So we will be replacing Hikey with uh, one of the Android TV platforms from 96 boards in future. But in order to enable some uh, cool demos, so we started off with uh, Hikey um, the, today. So right now it's playing a video. How does yeah. the UI look like? UI looks good. We are not. We have not enabled any media accelerators yet. It is all software decoding, which is happening on Hikey. But in future, when we get to the TV platform, we will be enabling uh, media accelerators along with the uh, along with the Android TV components. So I have with me uh, Vincent Chow. He is from M Star, and I have Shalu. Uh, he is from Shoshanex. So they are working working with me in my team, doing all the Android TV stuff. So they are mainly the security uh, uh, guys who are helping me with uh, building all the trusted application for widevine and pl play ready and also integrating the opti framework uh, with uh, android tv so we will be having an end-to-end -end solution uh, there so um, is is basically drm stuff right yes uh, yeah so how's, uh, how is it working the stuff so, you're doing uh, basically we we, we work, yeah, Come integrate, yeah. Uh, integrated uh, uh, opti with uh, widevine DRM technology and also and we can have some media playback for secure like so, things. So there's right here there's a logo you're showing Netflix because Netflix and Amazon and some other they like have requirements for specific DRM support, right? Yeah. And uh, this is what you're trying to make work with yeah. the open source AOSP TV. Yes. 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 And yeah. how, how does that work? How is it possible to do a DRM in open source? I mean, I'm joking, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it is possible, like Android comes with uh, all uh, DRM uh, stuff. So what we enable is the uh, secure uh, side of things with the uh, Linaros Opti framework. So which will actually give the, uh, op um, like we write the trusted application on uh, the security side and we uh, use all the existing DRM framework. And uh, as I said, like the media accelerators are not in there. So when we do the complete media accelerator integration, it will become like an end-to-end -end secure uh, media playback. So that is the goal of uh, this project to give end-to-end -end, uh, solution. So it's going gonna, it's gonna <laughs> to support uh, hardware acceleration with DRM somehow, connect from one to the other. And you're able to do this. It's working. Uh, we, we are still working on this part because we have the secure processor and we can switch the secure wall to, to perform the, the decryption and, the, and the we, we can keep the, the clear content data in the, in the secure memory and the, 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 the Linux, cannot, Linux kernel cannot access the secure memory. So we can isolation both the, the Linux kernel and the secure, secure environment. And so uh, this is quite important. I mean, I go, I go to, when I go to uh, China, I go to some trade shows, a lot of Android TV boxes. But they all, what are they running? Some kind of a messy Android, no? Like just some Android from the, from the smartphone they put on a TV box? Yeah, I But don't, this is not as good as... Yeah, I don't know what they're running, so I cannot comment on that. But uh, definitely, like if you want to have uh, GMS, uh, Google applications uh, running, on, um, uh, running on your box, then you need to uh, get official certifications from Google. So there is a complete process that you need to follow. So what we give uh, from Linaro is an end-to-end -end solution with the CTS compatibility. So we test the software for CDD compliance. So with this software and adding any custom value, uh, custom UI 
and do adding the differentiators our members can go to google with an end solution for getting easy certification so that will be help them to quickly get the any kind of certification and the gms so you work in the open source linux world the open source android and you've been learning, doing android and linux for a while right yeah yeah so yeah personally i was part of uh, android uh, core working group in linaro and then um, uh, i was doing all arm v8 uh, stuff for uh, linaro so once arm v8 uh, stuff was done 64 bit android and other things were done so then i moved to like i was working uh, in different projects now i'm uh, doing uh, android tv for uh, linaro so your work is basically in the pocket of everybody in the world right <laughs> i think so your software is going back into android everybody's using it yeah. uh, but is google making android tv open source or you just say hey we work in open source we do whatever we want and you no. start doing even before google puts it open source or what what is it no android it? tv of uh, Google already has everything in open source like AOSP project is completely open source for the whole A Android TV yeah it's all like the TV input framework everything is already open source so uh, but what we need to do is the hardware abstraction layers for linear uh, devices like antennas or like uh, your HDMI in or video in this kind of thing so they they need a, uh, they need a hardware abstraction layer enabled so those things we uh, add as some live examples on our 96 board tv platform because they have uh, HDMI in and uh, they have a few video in there and like antenna input devices so we enable those uh, input devices along with the IPTV um, uh, IPTV layer as well so it is uh, media over uh, IP as well as media over linear devices. So we enable both of these. So uh, uh, how is uh, Android TV different from Android? What is just a part? It's kind of like a type one type of Android. So mainly the the there, there are there is very limited difference between uh, Android uh, for mobile and Android for TV. But uh, the main the differentiation factor here is the TV input framework which Google has provided, which is very good and very uh, the, which gives a clear uh, uh, layer for uh, integrating any TV input devices. So that is very good and very neatly done by the Android team at Google. So but as I said, like the linear input devices have to be integrated by the vendor and uh, they have hardware abstraction layers have to be uh, implemented and the TV input service should be uh, uh, should be integrated with these HALs and then the uh, live, uh, live TV channels and live TV app which again Google provides so those things can show up these channels and user can select one of these channels to uh, watch the TV so that way it uh, that way it is very clear uh, for Android TV developers on what path or what framework to exactly change and they don't have to work across all the Android other uh, components of uh, Android as such. So, uh, for example, just with the uh, M-Star chips, there's many smart TV, many TV box. Uh, do they run many different type of Android out there? Is it mess, uh, messy and Linaro is trying to make it better and uh, more smooth, right? That's the work that's happening here, right? Uh, I, I think so. Uh, for now, m is uh, is using the proprietary Android uh, trunk, but uh, we are working with Android, and uh, we we hope uh, consider using something different, like something more open, or something uh, what's called more optimized. Yes. Everything better, right? Yes. So the Android TV experiences will not be fragmented, but actually, uh, and there will be a big part. So but that means uh, your work is not only in everybody's pocket, but it's going to be in everybody's living room. Yeah, so uh, for our members, the va main value add that we are adding, like for uh, M-Star or High Silicon or for uh, um, the Shosha Next or any, uh, so so our work is for SOC vendors, our work is for content providers, our work is for community uh, application developers and uh, the OEMs and ODMs. So the work that we are doing as part of MLCR uh, for uh, Android TV, uh, it, it's actually to cater to all these various different uh, cus end customers end users so what they get is like a like an end-to-end -end solution of uh, Android and they don't have to really work on uh, the baseline uh, components so baseline components are already developed by us which includes the secure data path secure media playback the complete uh, uh, Android TV input framework with all the linear devices and IPTV devices so all these things are part and uh, part of our starter kit kind of thing with the 96 board uh, reference platform for TV which is which is 
based on the 96 uh, board spec for TV. So all these things come as a bundle uh, thing to um, the end consumer and then they can actually work only on the key differentiating uh, factors like their accelerators or codec accelerators and uh, doing any kind of custom UI or regional specific uh, content that if they want to populate. So all these things can be uh, done by the uh, SOC vendors and content providers and they are not uh, they don't have to get distracted with all the baseline software which we have already delivered it to them so they will just be able to ship very good hardware acceleration of uh, all the video and yeah. also DRM so they will potentially be more uh, 4k Netflix 4k and Amazon 4k uh, because they will be uh, ready to be approved yeah. that it is secure so and smooth and fast and our everything. initial goal is to get wide wine uh, working and then we already had uh, uh, worked on play ready integration with Android so those two things are quick uh, we should be able to provide uh, quickly and also clear key we, we can make clear key validation also uh, so all these things will uh, is something which we are uh, working towards and everybody who's making an SOC for TV box should work with you right everybody should join yeah, but you want to uh, have uh, Amlogic and uh, Rockchip, some other... At this point, we are really not looking at very low-cost uh, segment because that is very competitive and the challenge there is like uh, uh, getting time to market faster and the but the software experience there will be limited because the SOC that they will be using is not so premium. Um, but uh, wherever it is a high-end uh, setup box or advanced setup box with the latest features of Android and uh, where, uh, wherever it is smart TVs with the uh, extended features and functionality, their uh, Android TV would really look uh, amazing compared to any other uh, OS uh, that is available for TVs today. So how do you feel about working with, uh, with all these uh, uh, people in Denaro? Me? Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. It's cool? <laughs> yeah, it's cool. And from different companies, everybody join together, work together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we have common goals and then, and, and we, we, we can have uh, achieve some, 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 some task. And, and it's, it's fun? Cool. Yeah, it's fun, fun work? Yeah, it's really fun. Okay, cool. Thank you. Ciao,